So Eliza, I've, I've spoken to a lot of, you know, small businesses in the past few months. And I've realized even though they have this inclination towards sustainability, they think this is something that, you know, could be done at a later stage. And uh, if I put it on the Eisenhower matrix, that is uh, my favorite matrix. So it falls under important but uh, not urgent uh, quadrant. And do you think like it should, you know, move move from there to the important and uh, urgent quadrant? I think it needs to be in important and urgent definitely now. I think a lot of business owners for like 10, 20 years have been saying later, later, later. And in my mind, and I think to a lot of business owners, it's never been more clear that now is the time. I mean, you look at COVID and hurricanes and all the wildfires mm -hmm. that are happening. I think now right. it's pretty obvious that the climate is changing and we need to start taking action. There was actually a survey done recently that asked people in April how they thought about climate change just with COVID and 71% of people said that climate change would become as urgent a situation as COVID is. So I think people are now thinking about it in that way. So I think that business owners need to be doing that as well. Right. It's interesting that you mentioned that, like I was watching Bill Gates' recent interview where he, you know, he articulately describes that, that climate change is not like a pandemic where you build a vaccine, spend like tens of billions of dollars, build a vaccine and put a stop to it. Like this is a more serious problem and it's much harder to put a stop to it. Uh, so coming to my next question, you know, <clears throat> like we say, if you can't measure it, you can't really improve it. So how can companies look at this topic of sustainability in a more quantifiable manner? Um, I think it's easy to get kind of overwhelmed with this like billion dollar transformation and so much, you know, needs to be done to fix this problem. Right. Um, and I think a lot of companies kind of use that as a like, oh my gosh, it seems like such a big problem. How do I do it? And I think a lot of companies say like, I'm really not in an industry that's thinking about it right now, or it's only for companies that are in a certain place. Um, so I think if a company is on the fence or they're trying to figure out how to quantify it, um, I like to think about introducing the idea of an opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. So what you're giving up by not taking action, what benefits you're foregoing. Um, so I think it can be helpful for a company to frame it in that way, just to think about the benefits that they could be giving up by delaying taking action now. Okay, it's interesting like how you have uh, woven the idea of uh, opportunity cost to sustainability. So could you just elaborate a bit more on that and tell us what major uh, opportunity cost uh, are there that you, that you see here? Yeah, so I think with opportunity costs, um, just speaking broadly, there's two things that the majority of companies have and that is interactions with millennials whether that's as your customers your supplies or your employees and then the other thing that you know 99 percent of companies have are resource costs like energy waste and water um right. so i think if you're looking at both of those things there's a lot of opportunity um and benefits that can come from that so with millennials i mean there's just like so much data that comes out every year about how sustainable millennials want to be and how they're thinking about it. Um, there's research that says, you know, millennials think companies need to act on environmental and social issues. 75% um, of millennials will do research to see if companies are acting. So if you have a customer that's a millennial, that's something you should be thinking about. But I think um, something that's really powerful for companies to think about is millennials as employees. Mm. Uh, millennials will be 75% of the workforce by 2025. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as we, as time moves on, there's only going to be more millennials in the workforce. Right. Um, and I think it's something like 70% of millennials, you know, consider sustainability when they're thinking about staying at a company long term. Um, 
and 40% will pick one job over another based on a company's sustainability strategy. So these are real choices that millennials are making. Um, so by foregoing sustainability, you're foregoing a lot of that millennial interaction um, right. that could be there. So that's the first thing um, I encourage companies to think about. And then the second one is sort of a more traditional opportunity cost. If you're looking at what you're spending on waste, energy, water, um, if you could save 10 to 20% of your spending, you can start doing that now, or you can do that in five years. Um, right. If you do it now, you're saving that money over that long term. Um, so I think just thinking about sustainability as something that you're going to implement now that will benefit your business for years to come. This isn't just something that's kind of like a one and done and you don't see a lot of benefit from it, but looking at millennials or looking at costs, if you can lower costs now or engage millennials, that's going to be a big difference in your business over the long term. Right, right. No, those, those are some, some solid points, Eliza. I think looking at sustainability from the lens of opportunity cost can definitely help, you know, bring in some perspective for uh, especially the small business owners. So thanks a lot for sharing that. You're welcome.